Well, it's funny you should ask me this question since I'm a lecturer, really, but uh, for me, learning never stops. Uh, I learn from students, I learn from my colleagues, I learn from various books and articles that I read, I learn from our industry partners that I work with, um, and that's something I hope to transmit to our students, really, that I'm afraid learning doesn't stop in school or indeed after university. For me, one or two things matter. Uh, one, is it relevant to their career prospects? And by that mean, uh, I mean, is it going to be helpful to, to them finding a job later on? Is it going to be helpful in the marketplace? Is it relevant? Very important. And I suppose the second point is, I always try to make the connection with the big picture. All right, I teach electronic crime or whatever that might be, but I try to link that with the context of the course that they're part of. And I think that's important for them to see that we don't teach these things in isolation. They're connected. Right. Well, I'll, I'll talk about opportunities to engage in learning. I mean, for me, uh, we're at university now. School time is over. So in that sense, I'm afraid, is a two-way street. Uh, students have to take a large part of the responsibility here in terms of engaging with the materials, in terms of going beyond what we recommend in the lecture slides, in the workshop exercises or seminar activities. Uh, it's part of getting into that uh, uh, frame of mind where, you know, learning is actually a lifelong process. Um, in terms of actual materials that they might engage with, well, we have a whole variety. We've got Blackboard sites, we've got the Learning Centre, we've got an increasing number of digital resources, we've got uh, a number of video materials or audio materials that we do. And let's not forget the old chestnut of the feedback. I'm afraid that is very much part of engaging with the learning process. Learning from maybe past mistakes or making sure that you correct and improve your own performance over time. Uh, well, it really depends on what you're teaching and who you're teaching it to. Um, you would teach a level four, a year one uh, sort of seminar class completely different to what you would do at master's level or indeed on a corporate program. Um, the level of engagement, the level of experience of the students, their background um, and the subject actually mean that you will have to adapt the teaching style to the teaching environment. And this can vary from going back maybe to, to, to year one, where you take maybe a more traditional approach, you direct the students a lot more, um, you keep a close eye on what they're doing, to maybe your typical corporate delegate, where um, you will be interrupted in the first sec 10 seconds of your, of your session, basically. They will have their own opinions, they will challenge your view, they will challenge established theory, they will introduce their own points of view. So there's a whole spectrum from just sitting there, I suppose, and directing the class and uh, making sure they follow fairly rigorous instructions to uh, a completely open arena where ideas are thrown about, where discussion, um, I'm afraid, heats up at times, and that's a good thing. That shows a good level of engagement. Uh, well, we're a business school, um, Sheffield Business School. Uh, this implies that most of our staff, and indeed that's the case, will have got some industry experience, will have got, in some cases, some considerable experience outside the academic world. Uh, what does this mean? This means that you can bring into the classroom uh, uh, concrete examples that you've uh, sort of gone through. This means that you know where the theory, I'm afraid, fails in practice at times. You know maybe where a theory actually works very well in practice. Uh, you know that in a workplace, for example, uh, in a professional environment, it's not always, I'm afraid, about what you know. It's about how you do it, how you present it to the stakeholders that you work with, 
It's about how you disseminate to the wider group that you need to sort of engage with. Um, I'm afraid we're all political animals. Um, workplaces are political places. You need, I'm afraid, to sell your wares. Uh, knowledge, you know, uh, knowledge alone is not enough, I'm afraid. Um, you will need to possess a variety of soft skills as well. Now, this is something that we can teach to a certain extent in the university, but um, it is always the case that uh, people who have been there uh, in, the, in the industry, in the commercial world, uh, will, uh, will be able to bring a, a much broader perspective uh, to, the, to the whole uh, discussion. Right, well, I'll discuss my postgrad group, which I'm going to teach them in half an hour or so. Uh, my experience with uh, this group of postgraduate students is um, we're nearing now the sort of end of the delivery, so I can make a full assessment of how our relationship worked, how the delivery of materials worked, and all that. Um, the group I'm teaching at the moment is a very international group. People that are sort of participating in the sessions come from a humongous variety of backgrounds. Um, they have a hugely diverse take on uh, the various topics that we go through. Uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, the module is of course called Electronic Crime and some of the issues that I discussed are uh, intrinsically related to technology and the use of technology and the use of information systems. Now of course the technological landscape in the United Kingdom, for example, is very different to the technology uh, landscape in Ghana, if you take that as an example. So we have some very, very interesting uh, discussions in the classroom where we discuss uh, the differences between how, say, a particular type of electronic crime may be committed in the UK versus how this may be committed or even be possible in, a, in, a, in an African country. That's a, that's a good example. Right, well, for me, the important thing is when you go out there, when you sit in front of that class, when you're starting the discussion, is uh, that you know what you're talking about and that you're relevant. I'm afraid the class will catch you out in three seconds if you don't. Um, I bring, of course, to the whole issue of electronic crime and information system security, I bring a number of years of experience out in the industry. I used to work for uh, Capgemini, one of the major European uh, consultancies in the technology sector. Uh, this enables me, along with uh, the theoretical underpinning uh, that I present to the class, this enables me to give that broad view, give that relevant view, give that I suppose a um, view where I can put uh, a face to the things or rather a, a concrete example behind the things that I'm talking about. Of course in an area such as information system security and electronic crime, uh, things are moving very, very fast. Uh, it's very important that one keeps, uh, keeps uh, uh, oneself up to date with all of these issues. Um, I'm afraid, uh, given the sort of uh, global environment that most of the organisations work in at the moment, that's including Sheffield Hallam University, um, the issue of information system security and electronic crime is a very topical one. Uh, whether you work in anything related to information systems or not, um, as a professional, as a future manager, as a future senior uh, uh, person in an organisation, you will need to be aware of these issues and you will need to be able to deal with them at some point. Uh, this is a master's group that I'm teaching at the moment. Um, as such, most of them, most of the students uh, attending uh, this, this course are already in employment or indeed are in uh, a short-term uh, sort of work experience. The future that they're looking at, most of these uh, guys, uh, they are part of a forensics accounting uh, uh, sort of course. Um, 
that gives them a broad range of opportunities in terms of working for large consultancy firms, uh, for accounting practices, for auditing practices, for various government organisations that might be involved in uh, forensics or accounting processes. Um, there is a very interesting landscape in this area, employment landscape in this area at the moment, in the sense that there is a serious shortage of skills. Uh, people that are able to uh, perform forensics accounting in a digital world, or rather in the increasingly digital world that we have to deal with, uh, are rare. Uh, this is good news, I suppose, for them, because it means that uh, the employment opportunities once they finish the course are excellent. It means that the rewards associated with these employment opportunities are uh, significant. Uh, to be blunt, the pay rates are good. For me, the most interesting aspect of the group is the very international makeup of the delegates. Uh, I have people from uh, China, I have people from all over Africa, I have people from Cyprus. If you look at the economic situation of Cyprus at the moment, it makes for a very, very interesting discussion in the classroom when we discuss issues related to the financial sector, uh, for example. Um, it is a unique experience in that sense. Um, it's impossible to achieve the, that level of richness in terms of the discussions, in terms of the debates, uh, with a group which is uh, sort of uh, made up of only UK students, for example. Uh, the wealth of uh, backgrounds, the wealth of expertise, the wealth of experiences that these people bring to the discussion could not be achieved with, uh, in an environment where uh, you would only have UK-based students, for example. So for me, the most enjoyable aspect of the delivery is indeed the, the richness of the discussion um, given the international makeup of this particular group. Well, uh, I think we look at the Sheffield Business School as a bit of a family in that respect, uh, a bit of a one-stop shop for a number of opportunities. Now, let me be clear here, it is a two-way street. Uh, we are, I believe, offering an incredible range of opportunities, and I can list a few. Uh, we're working with a very large number of commercial uh, uh, corporate partners, we're working with a number of other higher education institutions. We're working with um, schools uh, prior to uh, 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 sort of students coming to us. Um, there is a very strong uh, student union. Um, Sheffield is a prime destination in the UK, um, so on and so forth. Uh, we provide uh, a number of uh, employment-related opportunities, things like placements, internships, so on and so forth. But it is ultimately up to the students to actually take advantage of these opportunities. Now, as the old saying says, you can take a horse to the water, but, you know, you can't make them drink. Uh, um, we are obviously trying to encourage, we are trying to promote all of these opportunities to our students. Um, and we are seeing a good level of engagement. Um, for me, where we could do possibly a little bit better, it would be in terms of supporting um, maybe the very large cohorts of international students that we are getting of late. Um, and I think we are uh, sort of starting to, to be fully geared up towards this. Um, but uh, to sum it up, Sheffield is a great place. Sheffield Business School is a great place to be in. Um, there is a very strong community of students. Um, there is a good social life. There is a very good um, level of support in terms of the academic life. So I suppose what I would say to any students or potential students is enjoy. <laughs>